Welcome back to Criminalistics, an introduction to forensic science. We are now covering chapter three of our course book into forensic science introductions. This chapter will cover physical evidence. Physical evidence encompasses any and all objects that can establish that a crime has or has not been committed and can provide a benefit to any crime and its victim. Almost anything can be physical evidence if the investigator cannot recognize physical evidence or cannot properly preserve it for laboratory examination. No amount of sophisticated laboratory instrumentation or technical expertise can salvage this situation. The purpose of recognizing physical evidence is so that it can be collected and analyzed. It is difficult to ascertain the weight of a given piece of evidence will have in a case, as ultimately the weight will be decided by a jury. Types of physical evidence. These range from bodily samples from blood, semen, saliva, documents, drugs on the scene, explosives and powders, fibers from clothing, hair and beyond, fingerprints, firearms and ammunition, glass, hair impressions, organs, and physiological fluids, paints, petroleum products, plastic bags, plastic, rubber, and other polymers, powder residues, serial numbers, soil and minerals, tool marks, vehicle lights, wood, and other vegetative matter. Purpose of examining physical evidence. The examination of physical evidence by a forensic scientist is usually undertaken for identification in comparison purposes. The identification process of an object is to determine the physical or chemical identity with as near absolute certainty as existing analytical techniques will permit. The process of identification first requires the adoption of testing procedures that give characteristic results for specific standard materials. Once these tests have been established, they may be permanently recorded or used repeatedly to prove the identity of suspect materials. Second, the identification requires that the number and type of tests needed to identify a substance be sufficient to exclude all other substances. Common types of identification. The crime laboratory is frequently requested to identify the chemical composition of an illicit drug. It may be asked to identify glass gasoline and residues recovered from the debris of a fire, or it may have to identify the nature of explosive residues, for example, dynamite, trinitrotoluene, nitroglycerin, the identity, the identification of blood, semen, hair, or wood are also very common. Comparison. A comparative analysis has the important role of determining whether or not a suspect specimen and a standard reference specimen have a common origin. Both the standard reference and the suspect specimen are subjected to the same tests. The forensic comparison is a two-step procedure. First, combinations of a select properties are chosen from the suspect and the standard reference specimen for comparison. Second, once the examination has been completed, the forensic scientist must be compared to render a conclusion with respect to the origins. Role of probability. To comprehend the evidential value of a comparison, one must appreciate the role that probability has in asserting the origins of two or more specimens. Simply defined probability is the frequency of occurrence of an event. If flipping a coin, probability is easy to establish. With many analytical processes, exact probability is impossible to define. Classifying characteristics, individual characteristics, Evidence that can be associated to a common source with an extremely high degree 
a probability is said to possess individual characteristics. In all cases, it is not possible to state with mathematical exactness the probability that the specimens are of common origin. It can only be concluded that the probability is so high as to defy mathematical calculations or human comprehension. Examples include the matching ridge characteristics of two fingerprints, the comparison of random striation markings on bullets or tool marks, the comparison of irregular and random wear patterns in tire or footwear impressions, the comparison of handwriting characteristics, the fitting together of the irregular edges of broken objects in the manner of a jigsaw puzzle, matching sequentially made plastic bags by striation marks running across the bags. Class characteristics. Evidence associated with a group is said to have class characteristics. Examples of evidence types with class characteristics include paint, fibers, glass, drugs, and items without unique distinguishing characteristics, such as some shoe or tire imprints. Class evidence. One of the current weaknesses of forensic science is the inability of the examiner to assign exact or even approximate probability values to the comparison of most class evidence, physical evidence. Example, what is the probability that a nylon fiber originated from a particular sweater or that a paint chip came from a suspect car in a hit and run? There are very few statistical data available from which to derive this information and in a mass-produced world gathering this kind of data is increasingly elusive. Class evidence. Uh, one of the primary endeavors for forensic scientists must be to create and update statistical databases for evaluating the significance of class physical evidence. Most items of physical evidence retrieved at crime scenes cannot be linked definitively to a single person or object. The value of class physical evidence lies in its ability to provide corroboration of events with data that are as nearly as possible free of human error and bias. When one is dealing with more than one type of class evidence, their collective presence may lead to an extremely high certainty that they originate from the same source. Finally, the significance of physical evidence is ultimately determined in the courtroom. Crossing over. Just when an item of physical evidence crosses the line that distinguishes class from individual is as difficult question to answer as is often the source of heated debate and honest disagreement among forensic scientists. The chances are low of encountering two indistinguishable items of physical evidence at a crime scene that actually originated from different sources. How many striations are necessary to individualize a mark to a tool or no other? and no other, how many color layers individualize a paint chip to a single car, how many ridge characteristics individualize a fingerprint, how many handwriting characteristics tie a person to a signature. These are all questions that defy simple answers. The task of the forensic scientist is to find as many characteristics as possible to compare one substance with another. Natural versus evidential limits. There are practical limits to the properties and characteristics the forensic scientist can select for comparison. Modern analytical techniques have become so sophisticated and sensitive that natural variations in objects become almost infinite. 
carrying natural variations to the extreme. No two things in the world are alike in every detail. Evidential variations are not the same as natural variations. Distinguishing variations of evidential use of natural variations is not always an easy task. Using physical evidence, as the number of different objects linking an individual to a crime scene increases, so does the likelihood of that individual's involvement with the crime. Just as important, a person may be exonerated or excluded from suspicion if physical evidence collected at a crime scene is found to be different from standard reference samples collected from that subject. Forensic databases may include Integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System, IFIS, is a national fingerprint and criminal history system maintained by the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI. There is the Combined DNA Index System, CODIS, enables federal, state, and local crime laboratories to electronically exchange and compare DNA profiles. Forensic databases, genealogy databases like GEDmatch are emergent are of emerging use to identify close relatives using DNA profiles. These databases contain samples that are processed by commercial genealogy companies and uploaded by private citizens. The National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, NIBIN, allows firearm analysts to acquire, digitize, and compare markings made by a firearm on bullets and cartridges, cartridge casings. The International Forensic Automotive Paint Data Query, PDQ, database contains chemical and color information pertaining to the original automotive paints. Sidecar shoe image capture and retrieval is a shoe print database. In any case, around the 12 and a half minute mark, glad to have you all for this chapter three for our class in college forensic science. See you all in the next video. Peace.